In the last video, we went over class-based forms, and hopefully, as you could tell, we saw a lot of advantages from doing class-based forms to automatically generate our forms for us, and we can do a lot of fun stuff in code. Class-based forms are, are awesome for one-off forms that aren't tightly modeled against an actual model. So this week, let's actually work on creating forms so that we can bind to models and actually mimic how our models look. I have already gone through and set up a few things and I've already gone ahead and written out our first model. You can see here our model is suggestion. It has a few fields already pre-filled out. The idea behind the suggestion form that we're going to do is people can come and leave tips and ideas. We're going to have people give a title to their suggestion. We would also prefer that they leave an email, but if they don't want to, they can leave a blank because, you know, we might want to actually contact them to find out more information. We'd actually like to get a link from them. And as you notice, we're using a URL field so that there's validation against there being a URL. And again, above with email, we have an email field. We're going to let them leave a description in case it's not just a link and we have that as a text field which will render out as a text area. Last week we showed a character field and we gave it a widget of text area. I just want to show you several different ways to do things. The next one is we need to know if the suggestion is time sensitive. So like let's say somebody drops us a news article or a you know they're telling us news we need to know if it is time sensitive or not. And then finally we have an approved um, the idea behind this is we can approve stuff in the admin panel and then later uh, we can go through and more thoroughly uh, dig through each of the items instead of just worrying about trying to go through everything all at once because we might get a lot of suggestions from people. So that's a really quick rundown. So now that we're done with our model, let's jump over and take a look at our template real quick. Notice this is a basic template, and we are just going to generate our form as, and have it separated as paragraphs. It's going to post to suggestion, and it's going to leave a message. Just real simple. I mean, this is almost exactly the same as in our last video using class-based forms. I've also already gone ahead and done the URL, and it's, again, just the same as with our co other contact form. So let's go ahead and move on to our view. And here we go. Note down here, we have our original from our class-based form. And this is everything that we've done. We define it. And then, so if you look up here at suggestion, again, it's fairly similar. You do the suggestion, it reads a post. If it's not a post, it does everything else. It goes and grabs a suggestion template, blah, 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 blah. You're already used to this. So now that we've done a run through of that, let's actually go ahead and create our form. And I really hope you like how simple this is. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually do a couple of imports. Now let's actually create our form, and this is super simple. And there we go. Our form is actually created based on our model. To get a quick idea of what's actually happening, we're actually inheriting model form, which go ahead and inherits other classes to go from the base of information that we have from inheriting the model object and adds extra functionality to our fields so that it, they can be used and rendered out properly and again bound to data that we get. Since we have our form done, let's actually go ahead and add the information that is needed for our view. The absolute minimum first thing we need to do is we need to actually render out our form. And we just do that with suggestion form. 
and instantiate it. There we go. So let's actually see what's going on now. Let's flip over to our browser. And here's it rendered out. And let's just refresh. And here we have our form. We have a title, email, link. It's generated our labels for us. We have a time sensitive thing, and we have approved. There we go. I mean, this is our form, and we've done it based on the model we already created. One final thing that we need to actually work on is we have that approved button. We don't actually want our users to see that. And, you know, because, you know, let's say we actually have a bigger model and there's other stuff that we don't want our users to deal with or see. We only want them to see a couple or we want to exclude a couple of form fields. Well, that's actually very simple and let's go ahead and see how to do that. Do approved. Now that we've done this, we should be able to just run it and approved is no longer there. There we are, we're running. Let's go ahead and refresh. What's going on? And the approved field is gone. Model with 20 fields in it, but we only want to show five. In that case, we can ju we can just include some, and so to show that, let's just change a word. That's all you have to do to include it. Let's come back over here. And that's all there really is to the more basic aspects of model-based forms. This way you can more simply create your forms based on your models. You don't actually have to create class-based forms and then bind those you know, in some way over to a model and do a bunch of trickery inside of your view. It's just a real simple, you know, passes right through the system and displays it onto the page. You add all your information, you hit submit, and it goes back through to the view. The view knows what it is based on the form class that, in, that inherits from the model, and then that drops into doing all the model stuff after that. And it's a real simple way to do things, which is one of the reasons I love Django Forms. I just want to thank you for watching this video. Thank you and have a great day.